Alrighty guys, I just woke up and uh, I think I'm about six weeks out right now, six, yeah, I think so, I mean, I'm not really counting, I'm trusting the process, but anyway, I'm going to trans Gold's Gym today, in a Gold's Gym of the Netherlands, and that one I've never been before, and since I'm going to do a guest posing on October 1, of the Gold's Gym Classic, I thought it was suited to at least train at the Gold's Gym before doing that guest posing. So yeah. But, as always, I can start the day off with some cardio. But let's check my shape first. Here's another shot like uh, last time. Really seeing the depth of the definition here. Same lighting. Not optimal lighting. But you should look good in any lighting when you're preparing for a show. Don't fool yourself and always stand under the best lighting, guys. That's not what you want to do. You want to look good always. Because, of course, there's good lighting on stage, but the guys next to you looked good even on bad lighting. So, just look your best at any time of the day. Anyway... Time for some cardio and then some nice breakfast. And by the way, it was a low day yesterday of carbs and a low day today. So I'm not really full, but the benefit of a low day of carbs is that you look a little more crisp. So it's a, you know, it's a benefit and a disadvantage at the same time. Anyway, cardio time. All right, guys, we're going straight to the workout. This gym is called the Gold's Gym, and it's in the Netherlands, so it's the Dutch Gold's Gym, the only one in the Netherlands. It's open 24 hours a day seven days a week so that makes it special it's just about a 40 minute 35 minute drive from my home but it was a very nice gym indeed pictures like this arnold versus phil very relevant nowadays after olympia of course but this is a very cool environment very cool pictures to look at while training always motivating to see and the reason why I am in this gym is because in about two more weeks I will be doing a guest posing at a new Dutch competition called the Gold's Gym Classic. So it is very fitting for me to train at least once in the Gold's Gym before doing the actual guest posing. And uh, I will of course record all of it for sure and uh, it'll be a special occasion but anyway as you can see i'm bench pressing quite a lot of sets and this is what i always do i really like to warm up quite a lot there are so many people who go too heavy on the bench press too fast and they have shoulder injuries let alone the chance of tearing a pec muscle which is the nightmare for a bodybuilder so I did about three warm-up sets and then starting out with the regular working sets. And uh, even my dad was also doing this workout with me. My mom is filming, which is pretty awesome. It is different when someone is there specifically to film the workout. You can get more details in and a much more footage as well. And um, this bar, this bench press bar, feels a little different from the bar that I'm used to at my own gym. It's a little thicker, so it was getting used to to really press it. But I was surprised that even though it felt uncomfortable compared to the other bar, I was still able to bench pretty much the same as I usually do. So to me, this is always a very important set. Three plates on each side. I want to be able to do at least 10 reps with this smoothly, no matter what time of the year it is, no matter what preparation I'm doing, no matter if I'm cutting, bulking, doesn't matter. This is my absolute basic limit that I set for myself to at least be able to do no matter what I'm going through. So 
I used to really struggle with only one rep of that weight and now I can do 10 reps pretty easily. And even the 150 kilo goes pretty smoothly. It felt a lot heavier than it looks right here. And guys, as you can see, even when the weight starts to become heavy, I still go all the way down. Don't focus on getting the weight up, but focus on getting the most out of the muscle. Increasing the range of motion by going all the way down and all the way up. That is what bodybuilding is all about. If you're more about strength, then by all means, train for strength. But I am a bodybuilder, so... and. Besides that, it's to protect your muscles, guys. If you go too heavy and your form isn't impeccable, you have more risk of tearing those precious pectoral muscles. And then as you can see, we're going to do some hammer strength chest presses. This is a very nice machine because it's angled in such a way that you really target the lower pecs, which is uh, something I haven't trained in a while using a machine. Usually I do it with a decline bench press or some dips, but this feels very different beca because in both the bench press and the dips, your arms, your hands stay in a fixed position. Here, however, you're able to squeeze the pecs, as you can see, as your arms move closer to each other as you press the weight. And that usually is the difference between using only barbells and using machines and that's why I think the combination between using free weights and machines is very important because if you look closely at the pecs I'm getting a full tension at the bottom full tension at the top as you can see right here I'm also showing pretty much all last sets of every exercise so you can see that I'm going past failure with a couple of reps a lot of bodybuilders don't like to do this but I most certainly do to get a better pump and a better result out of the exercise. And right there I'm picking up some dumbbells for set number two of some dumbbell flies. To me, flies are such an essential tool to building a full chest. It has really been a very important aspect of every single chest training I've done over the years. Trust me guys, doing only compounds, it will not give you a full striated, massive, pumped up chest if you do them without including flies. Why is that? Because flies are an isolation movement for the chest. You can stretch the chest out, you can contract the chest, do all kinds of things with the chest without using any other muscle. So all the stress is on the chest. So whether you have strong shoulders, whether you have strong triceps, it doesn't really matter because the chest is doing all of the work. So if chest is a weak point for you, probably those other muscle groups will take over when doing compound exercises such as the bench press, the dips and stuff like that. So if your chest is a weak point, make sure to include some flies, preferably dumbbell flies or cable flies. And as you guys know, the difference between dumbbell flies and cable flies is demonstrated right here i'm not going all the way up i'm keeping the tension on the chest for the stretch but with a cable fly you can go all the way in to contract chest and uh, that is the main difference between the free weight fly and a cable fly And guys, on exercises like this, it is very important to spot even when you think you can do the weight, you might all of a sudden fail and you might hurt yourself. I've heard a lot of people hurt their shoulders, hurt their pecs, doing flies or going down too fast, so having a spotter is always very useful. And guys, as this is Gold's Gym, I 
absolutely didn't have another choice but to do the classic free weight exercises such as you already saw the bench press but also the body weight dips one of the most famous exercises that Arnold himself used to do to create that massive chest and I've said this multiple times in previous videos but if you want a massive chest and you think your upper chest is a weak point don't solely focus on the upper chest also focus on the lower chest because the lower chest is the biggest part of your entire chest mass so when doing a decline movement such as a dip right here you can see the striations you work the biggest portion of the chest making sure to get the most growth possible and you know it's always nice to check your progress in different gyms different lighting and in my opinion natural lighting from the outside the sun gives you the best possible lighting and the best lighting to accurately judge your physique because lighting inside always changes in intensity but usually the natural lighting is pretty much the same white colors to show the true potential of your physique the true progression and then we do work the upper chest in this workout using the inclined chest press and at this point the chest is pretty much fatigued already as this is the last chest exercise so if you look closely at the weights they are very low but this exercise is really meant to stretch the chest and really feel those upper pecs working if you go too heavy you might work the shoulders too much you might work the triceps too much trust me your chest is already butchered from this workout so you don't want to go too heavy you cannot focus on the chest if you go too heavy guys so don't always focus on the weight but focus on the contraction on the stretch on the range of motion on the form first and if you can then add some weight then you're all free to do so for most optimal gains And after chest it is time for some triceps and I like to warm up the triceps with some rope pushdowns doing 15 or 20 reps at first really warming the joints up really warming those elbows up warming the triceps filling them up with blood and already triggering those muscles to do the correct form. If you look closely at my arms, if they will appear, you will see that I'm going all the way up, a little bit about 90 degrees, and then go all the way down, pushing the wrists outwards, turning them outwards on the bottom. When you do this, this targets, this contracts the small head of the triceps better more efficiently more effectively and that is what you want you don't want to turn it into a half an exercise you want to turn it into the most potential it has but doing it this way makes it a lot heavier and a lot more difficult to do so that's why a lot of people don't like to do this but as I've mentioned quite a lot of times don't focus on the weight but focus on what the muscle feels so your triceps actually feel like it's a very heavy weight you your mind your brain it doesn't really matter what it thinks it's all about what the muscle experiences because that will eventually trigger the anabolic response for maximum growth and here again doing some forced reps but with proper form going all the way down all the way up for some extra pump tastic action and I really like this exercise as well, the overhead rope extension. This really stretches the long head of the triceps, which I want to work out for sure. And when you look closely, I'm going all the way up again, extending the wrists outwards. So I turn this exercise not only in a long head activation, but also a small head activation. And then of course, a good tricep workout isn't complete with some kind of heavy exercise for triceps to really overload those muscles so this is a skull crusher and when the camera angle changes you can see that i'm doing it a little different from usual i'm bringing it to my hairline basically and then pushing it 
upwards and backwards. So you're, you're seeing me pushing it to the camera itself. So not directly upwards, but actually upwards and backwards at the same time. This causes a better contraction and a better stretch on the triceps without causing too much stress on the elbows themselves. So this will burn your triceps a lot more. So if you have trouble feeling the triceps during a score crusher, try doing it the way that I'm doing it. Usually that would have been the end of the workout, but I felt like doing some side delts because hey, we are in Gull's gym, so I'm taking advantage of every possibility here. And the lighting is pretty good here as well. It really looks different from the gym I used to go, so it's a very nice way to see your progress in different lighting. But as I always like to do, I do a lot of volume with the side delts. It's a small muscle group. You don't want to go too heavy. You want to go pretty, relatively light, but high volume so you can fill that small muscle group up with as much blood as possible for the maximum amount of gains. If you go too heavy, your traps will do most of the work. You can even see my traps doing a little bit of work right here, going pretty light. So imagine if you're going heavy. So do a lightweight with a lot of volume to get the best possible pump. And that was the workout, guys. Don't forget, there's still a flash chill going on on the website. I want to thank you for watching. And don't forget to stay golden. looked good even on bad lighting so just look your best at any time of the day anyway time for some cardio and then some nice breakfast and by the way it was a low day yesterday of carbs and a low day today so i'm not really full but the benefit of a low day of carbs is that you look a little more crisp so it's a you know it's a benefit and a disadvantage at the same in a goals gym of the Netherlands and that one I've never been before and since I'm going to do a guest posing on October 1 of the Gold's Gym Classic I thought it was suited to at least train at the Gold's Gym before doing that guest posing so yeah but as always I can start the day off with some cardio but let's check my shape first time anyway cardio time All right, guys, we're going straight to. Alrighty, guys, I just woke up, and uh, I think I'm about six weeks out right now. Six. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not really counting. I'm trusting the process. But anyway, I'm going to trans Gold's Gym today. First. Here's another shot like uh, last time. Really seeing the depth of the definition here. Same lighting. Not optimal lighting, but you should look good in any lighting when you're preparing for a show. Don't fool yourself and always stand under the best lighting, guys. That's not what you want to do. You want to look good always because of course there's good lighting on stage but the guys next to you